down here on the uh, junction of two rivers in Upun and Gadi. With seven stray dogs, two children, and a man washing himself in the river. It's the end of my first week in India and it's been an amazing trip so far. From the uh, architectural beauty of uh, Mumbai Airport Terminal 2. It's an absolutely stunning building, better than anything I've been in in Europe. To the, I don't know, the dim squalor of road workers living in plastic sheeting on the side of a motorway. I, th I thought I'd start this video with a roundup of how the first week has been and what my thoughts are. Of course, when you come to India, you do expect you're coming to see the culture, but it is an incredible shock to start off with. It's very, very different. I mean, that's why we come to India to see it different, but it does hit you. The first two or three days, you can be quite out of sorts. I certainly was quite out of sorts. I really did wonder what on earth am I doing here? I mean, there's the poverty and the filth and the rubbish and the smell and the noise and you can just virtually never be on your own you're just always people thousands and thousands and thousands of the people and of course for us Europeans that's uh, slightly unsettling because we're not used to thousands of people and certainly not thousands of young people uh, second thing on my list to say is about the danger on the roads now I knew it was going to be dangerous and it is dangerous, it is very, very dangerous. But the strange thing is about that danger is you get used to it. You just become fatalistic, you just fall into the crowd with everybody else. It's like some crazy tide of people, the roads are just so packed with people and they're all using all directions all the time with no discipline. This is driving on both sides of the road, either side of the road, just swerving around all over the place. Um, I've only actually been close to having a very nasty accident once in 500 kilometres and that's when a, bush, a bus pus, pushed me off the road. Now the bu buses are absolutely insane the way they drive. They drive 100 kilometres an hour down a small road. They've got maybe uh, I'm guessing a hundred children inside. I mean, it's absolutely completely crammed with children on their way to school. And their modus operandi is just to put your hand on the horn and everybody else will keep out of the way. And if you're not aware of that, like I wasn't on the first day or two, you're, uh, you're in for a bruising. I actually ended up coming off the bike into a gutter. Luckily, I was going slow and uh, Luckily, the guy was insistent with the horn, so I uh, I jumped off the road and jumped off the well, basically fell off the bike into the gutter. A few scratches and bruises, but nothing serious. Well, that's what I would say about the roads. As I say, they are dangerous, and you do get used to it. And I'm aware that any moment of any day on the bike or either on foot, you could be killed or seriously injured. Um, I believe there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of fatalities on the road in India every year and that really doesn't surprise me because it's uh, properly crazy. Third thing on my list is food. I'm really enjoying the food but then again I like spicy food. If you don't like spicy food there's nothing for you in India apart from fruit juice and ice cream. I mean everything, everything, everything is spicy and sometimes extremely spicy. I eat a lot of Indian food back in Europe, but uh, one of the curries that I had the other day, I asked for not spicy and it came, it was the hottest curry that I've ever eaten. I mean, seriously, much hotter than the vindaloo you would get in an English restaurant, much hotter. And I can deal with the spicy, I enjoy it. However, I don't enjoy it for breakfast, so it would be really nice if you could get some yogurt and fruit and muesli. I did find that actually in one place in Gokana, in a place that had some Western tourists. So they had muesli for breakfast and you could get pancakes as well, which is quite a treat. 
Um, but generally I'm enjoying the food. I've had no problems with my stomach so far. I'm just sticking to the uh, bottled mineral water. Uh, occasional cup of tea, but uh, mind you, the tea isn't like you'd expect at home. It comes in a very tiny glass, maybe 20 centimeter, uh, 20 deciliters. And uh, it's brewed forever, so it's, you know, we would call it builder's tea. It's stewed, so you could almost stand a spoon up in it. And in fact, you could stand a spoon up in it because it's so full of sugar that the spoon would stand up in it easily. Eat. Yeah, the, my normal day is I get up at 5.30. Well, put the alarm on at 5.30. And uh, I'm out of the hotel by 6. I've got three lights on the back of my bike and two on the front. And I cycle in the half light until 6.37 when it gets uh, dawn. And I push on for as long as I can until the heat becomes unbearable. Like that, I crack in a few kilometres and... Uh, Probably about nine o'clock I'll stop, find some shade somewhere, stop and have something to eat. Normally uh, something called lily, which is like a rice pancake thing that you get with two bowls of spicy sauce, one red spicy sauce and one white coconut spicy sauce. I think there's plenty of carbs in them, so you just uh, cram those down and maybe four tiny bananas that they, they have normally around. So four bananas big glass of fruit juice and this rice thing and that's what I have the rest of the uh, morning and then it's just a question of pushing on um, heat is uh, well above 30 degrees most of the time and I've got a heavily loaded touring bike so uh, it's hard work especially going up the hills uh, around 12 o'clock I start to think about finding somewhere to stay so far I've been luckily um, found somewhere to stay nearly every day. The one day I didn't found, find anywhere to stay, I, uh, I just found some shade and stayed out of it until four o'clock because I didn't feel well. And uh, just got several liters of cold water inside me and sat in the shade for a couple of, well, three or four hours uh, waiting for it to calm down again. And then pushed on and then of course inevitably found somewhere just a couple of kilometers around the corner with air conditioning in a nice room. The rooms you pay about, uh, in European terms, about between six and eight euros for a room with a fan, um, maybe 15 for a room with air conditioning in one of the lodging they can... That was a tip. If you search for lodging on Google Maps, you find the places to stay. If you look for hotel, uh, you won't find anything. So you have to look for the word lodging and then you'll find somewhere to stay. That's how they're uh, nominated here in, in India. The rooms are normally very simple, but uh, reasonably clean. The sheets are clean. You sometimes get a towel, sometimes you don't get a towel. I brought my own very thin towel and sheet sleeping bag, although I've uh, not used the sheet sleeping bag yet because the sheets have always been clean and the room's immaculate. You normally get an ensuite bathroom with a very, you know, very basic facility. It's a toilet shower and a sink and a bucket to wash your clothes in which is handy you can buy a single dose of uh, washing powder in any of the kiosks to wash the clothes which is quite handy and uh, they might give you a bar of soap and a towel uh, if you're lucky otherwise you have to bring your own again the kiosks you can get all of anything you need in these kiosks and I must have passed a million kiosks it seems like everybody in India owns a kiosk and they're just sitting lazily at the side of the road waiting for a tourist to come up and spend 5p on a bar or so. Just, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's so different. And then next week, well, um, as I say, it's Monday today. Uh, Tuesday, I'm uh, heading up to a place called Madikari. It's uh, 100 kilometers away, so I'm not too sure whether I'm actually going to get there tomorrow night in 100 kilometers, as it's uh, 1,800 meters of climbing, so that might be a bit of an ask. So I'll, if I can't make it, I'll just stop at lunchtime as usual and get there the next day. Um, there'll be tea plantations, mountains, spicy food, funny people, crazy situations, and dangerous roads. But more about that next time.